Bring well, up. welcome back to Awake in Atlanta. And Shannon's trying to s- mumble here something here. She I had a grape in, in my mouth. mouth. A grape. Uh, so, guys, we have a great guest coming on, uh, Rachel Smets. Uh, and but first, let me read a little comment here from Dave. Uh, Dave says, Shannon, it takes a village. You know that you know that's quoting Hillary Clinton now. No, it's not. It's an old African proverb. Look it up. Well, sh- that's Don't your- ever, ever say I'm quoting Hillary Clinton. Jeez. D- Dave, you just keep saying whatever you want to say, bro. Dave, you're in trouble. You're in timeout, Dave. Go put your nose. <laughs> in the corner. All right, let's bring in Rachel. Rachel's a clarity clarity coach, TEDx speaker, author, and YouTuber. Good morning. Rachel, good morning. Hi, good morning. Wow, Welcome you to got Awaken the Atlanta. best background ever. And this is real. This is not a, green you know, screen. this is not a green screen. No, 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 it's Where real. Are you? Where are you? Well, um, I'm always traveling the world, and right now I'm sitting in Portugal. And so oh, this is the weather Portugal. in Portugal. No kidding. Oh, lucky How beautiful yeah. is that? Is Portugal uh, locked down right now? Or are they going through the second lockdowns? Or what's their, what's their, are they more laid no, back? It's, uh, well, it, I think there's, it depends if you're in a big city or not. I'm like all the way south, and there's like hardly any cases. So everything is pretty normal. I mean, yeah, people are wearing some masks, but everything's open, everything's accessible, sure. you know. Wonderful. Yeah. Why don't we go so there? It's a good place to be. Oh, I'm going to hang out with Rachel in that background. Look at that. I'm going to go get a coconut right <laughs> over her head. There. I was hesitating, like, should I sit inside? I'm like, no, no way. I need to yeah, show you this. Yeah, absolutely. it's beautiful. So, and it wakes us up. So, Rachel, you uh, did a TEDx, too, and um, talk about comparisons and competition. Now, what motivated you to even get into that conversation? Because it is, when you say competition now these days, it has such a negative connotation associated to it yeah i don't really like to talk about competition i mean we're all you know everybody's unique anyway and that's actually the whole conversation what i like to talk about is that we don't have to compete because we're all unique human beings and we all have something to offer right yes and the reason I came up with that, um, I did two TEDx talks, but this one particularly is because it's all relating to confidence. And I used to be super shy. And part of my shyness was comparing myself to others. Like, oh, they're all so better than me. And he has this and she has that. And she's better looking and she's thinner or fitter or I don't know, you know. And 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 I just felt I'm not good enough. You know, who, you know, who am I? I should not speak up. I was afraid to speak up. I was, I was just really shy and and low self-confidence. And I learned to grow that skill of confidence because I keep saying confidence is a skill. It's like going to the gym. You don't do it once. You just keep practicing and practicing and practicing. And then you grow your skill of confidence. What do you do to practice it? You take action. But one of those big things is stop comparing yourself to others. Mm. That's one of the key, key, key elements that I learned. Like, wait a minute. Why am I always comparing myself to the, you know, you're actually comparing yourself to the outside image, especially on social media here, you know, the outside image to your inside confidence, to your inside characteristic, to your inside personal. It makes no sense whatsoever. It makes no sense to compare yourself. And and these days with social media, you know, you take your phone, you scroll down, and, and right. all you see is these beautiful relationships and businesses and successes. And But what do we do on social media? We show our best and we yes. hide our mess. Right. <laughs> yeah. So what are we comparing ourselves to? You know, and then I'm like... I mean, seriously. And then it's the moment that I started like, okay, hold on, you know, like stop, like literally I just, I just shout like, stop, like, stop it. Like the moment I start comparing like, oh, but this is better and he's better and she's better. Let me ask you this, because of that comparison, do you see it as our children, our teenagers are having a harder time establishing who they are as individuals because of social media? Um, I think that's a really good point you're making there. I think, I think, I think, yeah, I think if, if, if your confidence is low, then you tend to compare yourself, you know, and then you tend to feel less about yourself because you're comparing yourself to these others. So yeah, I think it's definitely, there's definitely, definitely a relation. Absolutely. So if you find yourself constantly comparing yourself and you're in that bubble, how do you break out of it? Because it's easier said than done. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, the the first thing is stop it. Like seriously, catch yourself and just catch yourself doing it. That's the, the, the awareness is the key to everything, like Mm. to negative thoughts, to comparison, to, you know, all of that. And I talk about mindset a lot and, you know, so, you know, catch yourself. So that's really the first step, like being aware that you're actually doing that because a lot of people are doing it and they're not aware of it. So just be aware of that. You're doing that. And then stop it like yeah. literally shout to yourself stop it stop it stop it and then hold up a mirror 
hold up a mirror and look at yourself, not at others, look at yourself and think like, okay, what am I good at? What are my qualities? What is my personality? What are, what is my, you know, U USP, unique yes. selling, selling point, you know, just what is that? And so, um, I think that is really, really, that's what, that's what did it for me. And so what I tell my clients as well that I coach is, okay, start writing down your achievements, yes. start writing down your strengths, start writing down your skills. And it doesn't have to be an award so or a like degree or all of that. You realize this, right? Cause you're in it. You're constantly in that mindset. So you're manifesting, you're raising your frequency. Do you follow her? Yeah, I do. I do because I believe in manifesting totally. Okay, yeah, I totally right. do. Um, but it's, this is really about, you know, looking at yourself and there's a quote from Coco Chanel that I just love and it's beauty begins the moment you decide to be yourself. Oh, I love that. Once you know yourself, Be once I know thyself, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, that's she, she's adding to my point, Shannon. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So, um, so, so Rachel, this is fascinating <laughs> because, you know, so many people like, you know, you hear this, uh, what's your take on, and let me hear the psychological take here of like when you, when, in say kids sports. Uh, when now these days a lot of parents are like, well, everybody wins, everybody gets a trophy, rather than separating out that this person did a merit was better than this person here. How do you handle that, and what do you think is healthy? Well, coming from a very competitive sports background myself, Ooh, like what? What was that? Um, Skiing. <laughs> I hate I hate cold. I mean, look at me here, sitting here. You talk about I skiing. I hate like cold. Pageantry and you go skiing. You're so funny. <laughs> Where do you get that? Yeah. Um, well, okay. I, I do. I do. I do honestly feel that the fact that I was so competitive and that I wanted to win has helped me a lot in my ambitions, in my ambition, in in my life and in my business. So, right. so I think. But like everything, it has positives and negatives, yes. right? I do understand also about, hey, let's reward everyone, you know, and it's good to, you know, yeah, to appreciate what, what, whoever, exactly, exactly. But the winning aspect, I mean, why else do we want to, you know, be the best? It's, it's about being the best within ourselves, right? And, and I believe in that. It's not about, you know, fighting somebody else. It's like, what is the best that you can do? And then, you know, so I don't think, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with competing in sports. Um, yeah. So I, I think there's pros and cons so to everything. What you're saying is, is that, you know, focus on competition, but focus on competing with yourself on your own record. And then as you're competing with yourself, you're getting better and you're, you're, you're getting the self-esteem and yep. you're, and you're, and you're, and you're, but there's gotta be a line. Well, I'm just saying, where's that, the line? Like, you don't think that like transgender uh, men should, to, should do women's sports. Well, let's get political. Uh, let's well, get dirty. Uh, well, uh, well uh, that's, that, that's a little bit, that's extreme. I mean, I hear what you're saying, but I'm just saying when you're learning to compete with yourself and then you're competing when you're competing with somebody else, but you're measuring your own success and you're not measuring if you're better than that person. I think it's a much healthier perspective when it comes to winning. And losing Absolutely. Because you will say to that person over there, Hey, you know what? I'm here to help you because if you beat me, it doesn't matter. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm racing against me, you know? Yes. And I think when you talk about when you just said, Shannon, where's the limit? I don't think there is a limit. I don't think there should be a limit to better yourself. Like if, if every day you're a better person than the day before, if every day you try to be better, you know, there, you, you're limitless. Like that's something right. I talk about. Like you are limitless and, and people just, with. it's those it's those limitations that we put on ourselves and it's those, those, that, that should break down. Like, no, why should there be a limit? Just constantly, constantly grow. There's a growth, you know, feeling unlimited you know, limitless. There's an abundance. And if you don't, if you, if you have a limit, yeah. if you set a limit, then you're going to manifest that limit. If you set your sights on, you have an abundance of anything you want. The universe is here to give you what you want and what you're putting out there. Then you're going to get Absolutely. that. But there's got to be a line. Absolutely. Let's go back to the transports. Do you think oh, that it's okay? Just curious. I want right, to know what her right, opinion right, is. All right. Do you think that it's okay for a boy that's transitioning into a woman to do women's sports? Do you think that should be allowed? I, I, to be honest, I don't have, a, I don't have an opinion because if right. that's what this person wants to do, then that's what this person wants. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm, it really depends on what this person wants to do. If, if anybody wants to try something else or something different, then 
try. I'm just, I'm all for like, do it, try it, test it, see how people. it feels. Well, well, Shannon's, to Shannon's point, it's we probably, live in a world with other people. Well, to Shannon's point, there's a level of unfairness right. potentially in there, you know, and you got to look, look at all be a that. Line. Well, I mean, but I'm more concerned about Shannon outside of the. Uh, I just like getting into dirty stuff. I like, to, I like to talk about. But, but that's not dirty. It's just part not of reality. Not dirty. You know what I mean? Like yeah, political. I like to make yeah. people squirm. Yeah, I know. But that's not, right. it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not very healthy. Uh, for very, not very com- <laughs> it's a little competitive My, of you, isn't it? <laughs> it's very competitive, you know? yeah. So, uh, so Rachel, when it, when it comes to, um, like we, we talked about earlier, <laughs> was downward comparison. That's when somebody's involved in comparing yourself to someone you perceive worse off than you. Is that What does that create? Does that create a false sense of self-esteem? I mean, when you're looking, looking and you're making yourself feel better as, as you're making that person, you know, you're judging them saying no, they're not as good as me right and, and how does that really help you if it even does uh in competition well when you mention the word judging there's something that i really learned as well it's like stop judging you know everybody's is who they are and uh, you know you should be, be be open to everyone and and judging is is really i don't know i just when you judge you don't really, I always feel like I don't judge somebody else. I'm actually judging myself because Mm. if you feel somebody is not good enough or somebody's doing this or that wrong, I always think like, wait a minute, why am I doing this? Like again, hold up that mirror. Like Mm. why am I even judging? Why am I having this opinion? Usually it's about me. It's not about them. That's what judging is all about. Why do you criticize someone? It's probably because of something they are doing that you're not satisfied with, with yourself. So I always like to, like, I really learn to just constantly look at myself again, like, instead of projecting, just, you know, hey, wait, what's wrong with me here? Well, well what should I be looking difference at? difference between judging and observing. Mm, well, we, oh, yeah, we, totally. But, yeah, however, but we yeah. all make these unconscious judgments on other people all the time. Yeah, I definitely but, think I'm but, better than, than that, you know, no, this is going to sound terrible. I said that meth addict over there. That sounds <laughs> awful, though. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. But, yeah, I get it. But, but you judge it. But, she, her, to, to, uh, but that's also an observation. Like, Yeah, but to Rachel's point is is when you, you, it, everything's a mirror of ourselves. Right? Yeah. So as you're measuring that person of the meth addict, there's a part of you that, you know. Wants feels, to do meth. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a, part, there's, a, there's a part of you that um, is is uh, is not is not comfortable about that. Like you, yeah, you, because you want that person to thrive. You want them to make better choices because you know, hey, listen, doing those drugs that's not going to serve you. Yeah, no, but, that's going to hurt you. Yeah, but you may not be doing meth. You may be doing something else that's not serving you, hurting. Is my point because it's a mirror. So when the first when you see that to Rachel's point. To bring it back home first. Look in the mirror and say, okay, what is it about me yeah. that I am not happy with? Yeah. And that's what I think yeah. people serve that. So do you think, do you do that? Have you always done that? Or I'm sure you grew up. Or did you grew, learn you, doing You learn. learned how to do oh, that. Oh, I learned. I learned. I grew up in a family that was always criticizing other people. Like, mm-hmm. seriously, I was like, yeah. that's how I grew up. Like, oh, this is bad and that is bad and that's right. not good enough. It was never good enough because somebody was always doing something wrong, right? And right, so yeah. I really, really had to learn that, like, wait a minute, you know, do it's you, not about. Do you know my father? Critic. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Same father here? So, I mean, what's going on? Good. But um talking about judging is it's the same with our parents. It doesn't matter what, you know, a lot of, you know, like when you go in therapy and talking about psychology and all that, it's like, oh, you know, so how was your childhood and your childhood? And yes, it's important to know, like, hey, this is what, how I was raised. But then comes a time where now we're adults, okay, how can we move forward? I don't want to stick into my childhood the whole time, right? And so and so I learned you know, instead of judging my parents, like, okay, they did the best they could because they were raised some type of negative yes. or critical way, right? They're, and so they just yeah. did the best they could. Right. So now it's on my end now to move forward yes. and to be different, and right? To and to, to Yeah, and yeah. You can heal and that generation ahead of you. You can. You can heal yeah. many generations ahead of you, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. And then what you said was so good is like, now I've learned to observe, you know, not yeah. to judge, but uh, like seriously be, I always like to think of, being the director of your own movie, you know, a director sits and watches the whole actor in the play and all of that. And I'm just looking at my own life and my own, you know, thoughts and my own comments and as a neutral objective observer and not as a subjective judger. I was just thinking of Tim's quote, know thyself. <laughs> I can't stop. You're so, never going to live that down. So Do Rachel, you, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Do you believe in fake it till you make it? Ooh, good question. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I do. because it I puts do. out a certain frequency or what? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, I mean, just just really simple. Like, you know, when you sit up straight or, or when, you know, it's like 
these athletes before they 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 start their their, their whatever run or whatnot. You know, it's like you know they they, they have this like posture and this uh, you know like hey I'm 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 in victory and I'm a winner and you just you know you haven't won yet but you still you have that pose or if you sit up with your shoulders back it's like just doing this even if you don't feel confident oh, just a small back. exercise it's like you know just sit back it's like hey yeah but if you like if you don't feel confident and you sit like this like all scrunched in in your shoulders it's like <laughs> yeah but it's just you know you you will not feel that so yeah. even if you don't feel it but you you have that behavior I and same that. thing with thoughts i'll walk into a party like i know everyone and i'll shake my tushy like boom 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 and it's so yeah. fake i fa really i'm like crap i hope i make a friend here you know <laughs> or some enemies yeah. uh, well so, i mean when i i like no, i i, I, I travel to you know to i travel to all these places around the world and like at some parts of some locations i'm like oh my gosh what is this where am i who are these people and i'm like no way i'm not you know i'm a local here you know and i just act mm -hmm. as if like hey here i am i know my way around i'm, I'm so lost sometimes i'm like no nope, so i know where i am everything's fine you know so she'll and do better just works. what if question like yeah, what if you yeah. woke up in another city <laughs> yeah, that yeah. you didn't know and you didn't speak any language so, so rachel um do you mind me asking what was your competitive sport that you played or did <laughs> you don't have to say boxing Whoa, Whoa, that's badass. Come on, you should be proud of that. Why? Why should she be more proud of that than the pageantry girl? Because <laughs> <'cause> you're comparing. <laughs> yeah. You're comparing well, to I mean, right. I mean, how many women do you know are competitive boxers? I know, that's badass. That's really cool. So you And you got out of it because... It's uh, well because I get old. <laughs> because it's you know it's it's a great sport when you're you know I was in my mid twenties and you know it's it's super hard trainings and you know yeah. it's just you know you're completely beaten up and no I'm not you know it was great but She's I'm too uh, beautiful. I'm, I'm She's too beautiful too old. and you're boxing. definitely very fit I can see your body I'm like gosh you're fit like you clearly take yeah. pride in yourself you well, work out hey, that that's a good point though. I I love I love it yeah I love it that's a good point well, Rachel. What is? Yeah. Well, if you want to, you can finish your thought because I was going to probably add on to what you're about to say. Well, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about what you, I, I do love sports and I do like to keep fit and healthy. And I guess it's, you know, because it's, it's in me and I've yeah. done it for so many years. Um, so yes, but you know, coming back to the whole comparison and feeling good about yourself, the mind and the body are connected. And so if there's one thing that helps your confidence and that helps your self-esteem, it's exercise. It's like literally going outside and it doesn't mean you have to go and sweat in a gym for two hours, but just right. go outside, take that feel good hormones, just, yes. you know, the vitamins in the sun and just I mean, your mind and body is like, when you feel bad and you, you, you know, you just, you, you don't, you're not in the mood for anything, but the moment you start pumping your blood and exercising and 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 you know you just you just automatically feel better your mind feels better you you're clearer you're you know you're in the mood to do better things you know it just it just always goes together yes you know it, it's, it's incredible because you, you hit around the nose and that's what i was going to ask you is that when when you're working out when you're working out on a regular basis whatever it may be uh and i think it's a it's a combination of working dopamine. out working out and Endorphins. then eat, and eat, eating right because eating yeah. right and working out go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, that yeah. You, there is a sense of confidence you get. And when you slim down or you look better physically and you look in the mirror yeah. you and, feel and you better. compare yourself to yeah. where you were before, yes. not compare yourself to somebody else, right. but compare yourself to yeah. yourself, it sets up so many successes for what you're going to be doing later on in your day, you know, because yeah. who you meet, how you interact with them, your level of confidence, because people, totally. people are attracted to confidence, are they not? Totally. And I have a big point I want to make about that, about okay. the people. And before I do that, what you said about the food, it's, it's, there's something I just keep remembering. It's junk food, junk body, junk brain. Mm. Yes. Healthy food, healthy body, healthy brain. Right. Yeah. It's just, it just, it's just so true, you know, and it's I, critical. you are yeah. what you eat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the people you surround yourself with, oh my gosh, it's like, you know, that really changed my life as well. And what we were just saying about our parents and our family, and I love my family, I love my parents to bits. But if I would be surrounded by them the whole time, I would just stay stuck and just Negative. you know feel, exactly. And so the moment I start to surround myself 
you know, people who I'm, I'm inspired by, mm-hmm. you know, instead of comparing, like be inspired by certain people, like not, not, not being jealous, like, oh, they have it all. No, like oh, they have that. I want that too. Let me find out how they did it so I can do it too. And that's kind of, you know, the mind shifts that I started doing and surrounding myself by people who, you know, who were traveling, who were these freedompreneurs, who were doing the things that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And that motivates me and that inspires me and that, you know, that moves me forwards into that direction instead of staying stuck with the people people that just drag you you know i always say the energy you know the, the energy vampires yeah, um they just drag thing. you down they, yes especially yeah. if you're empathetic yeah. man you like get exhausted just from that oh yeah exhausted yeah totally all right yeah, so absolutely. do you help because you're a coach so what would you do if i came to you and said listen i need clarity because you're a clarity coach she, what's she, my first she, step you go to a psychiatrist <laughs> she would say get medicated <laughs> she'd take, I she'd take the medication uh, yeah no what would be my first step to have clarity in my own life, take my life back. Well, I'm 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 actually focused on on people who are stuck in a job or in a career, nine to five, a corporate, and because that's what I used to do. And they really want to be a freedompreneur. They want to you know have their online business, be an online coach, and just grow online and just have the freedom to be your own boss. So those are really the people that I help with. And then it's the clarity and okay, what skills do you have at this moment? What mindset are you having? Why are you staying stuck? Where you can you know live a life so without regrets? Because like that's taking, really my goal. Taking responsibility of your own life. It is, but it's also about knowing how to get there. Like, it's, okay, what skills can you use? How will you grow online? What do you need to do? Like, I always say, don't don't jump without a parachute. So don't take the leap. You know how people are like, oh, follow your heart and do what you love. And no, yeah. people used to tell me that all the time. Sure, but how are you going to pay the bills? Right. I mean, I'm super straightforward, realistic. And so it's really about, okay, let's, let's break it down. Let's take the steps. Like, don't take the leap. Let's, you know, see what you can do and start, you know, building up some clients and getting some money online and then go from full time to maybe four days to part time and then you know gradually um you know quit your job um so yeah that don't take the leap but like it's, it's those steps yeah i'm always like the bigger the risk the bigger the reward <laughs> well that's how i live my life <laughs> yeah know? roll the go, dice yeah. baby let's see what we get today so uh it's I th- working right yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think it's wonderful and I, I right now um we're in a world of just censorship coming everywhere and i think when when you have censorship uh what you can say and can't say i think it takes away from competition i think it's actually uh it creates more of an environment of of just that you know you will have to go along with everybody else and and then people who are competing against themselves you can't help but let merit drive your everyday life i mean when even with yourself when you're competing against yourself you're you're building your mer- merit of what you're going to be doing next and if you go out into an environment where you can't have your head above the crowd let's say and even though you're only competing against yourself it creates an environment of stagnation and it, i think it's mm. a, it's a killer yeah, it's what? a killer to the individual's merit what is fear what holds us back the most from pursuing oh, these yeah. steps like because so that fear just- is fear is huge like fear of uh, the unknown like that's the biggest one like fear of oh what's going to happen i don't know um fear of failing fear of success yes. fear of you know fear of what other people will say yes that's why you know so all of these fears and and but the thing is that fear is growth. Like I, I love talking about fear. I, I talk about it on my YouTube all the time about fear because this it is the biggest thing that holds you back. It's the fear. It's the limiting beliefs, yes. right? It's that monkey mindset. It's, um, it's all of these things, but fear is actually something positive because without fear, you don't grow. Like the first time you did your show, the first time you talked on, on in public, the first time you do anything, it's, it's scary. Yes, right. But once you do it, you get better at it. And it's like, yes, you know, and again, that sense of victory will give you more confidence because you've done and you can do it again yes. and it's it's simplest thing like the fear of going on a plane the first time a train the first time you you, you talk in a meeting the first time you know the first time fear is always there but fear makes you grow if you do nothing nothing will happen right right so fear and fear i i see fear as positive instead of fear oh my gosh fear no stay away no fear is fear is your friend shake hands with your fear fear is helping you you know fear is there to help you grow and and i always like to compare images like if you're standing on a very foggy beach you know, and you want to, you can't see the other end. You can't see behind the fog, you know, but it's by taking a step into that fog that, you know, new, new things come. 
right? And then another step. And then again, you see new things. But if you don't take that first step, nothing will happen. You'll never get to the other side. You know, so really, seriously, fear is just go so towards it. Now, the opposite of fear. Okay, like, let's talk about success real quick, because success looks different to each one of us, right? Because yes, of what you yes, just said absolutely. here. So for instance, I'm going to give you an example. I'm, I wrote a children's book. I put it out to publishers. I've got every single, I sent it out to nine publishers so far, and I've gotten four uh, rejection letters. And I don't feel like I'm failing. I feel like I'm succeeding because I wrote the damn book. Yeah. Totally. What do you but think success is? Yeah, I, yeah. I, that's, that's your perception. I think that's smart because as, you, as you're getting rejection letters, that means that you wrote the book is gone out. I and, did something. And, and or a lot, most people will look at the first rejection letter as, oh my God, it's I failed. Like I'm never going to make it. So how do you help those people see it? The bigger picture, like, no, you did it. You, this is the good thing. You succeeded yeah. just from doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, success has a different definition for everyone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Success could be, you know, $100 or $1 million. Success right. is, success is, you know, publishing a book or, or, or publishing right, and, yeah. and, and selling so many, you know, I mean, yeah, it's, it's just like, so it's really different for everyone. So first of all, you have to define for yourself what success means. And if success means, Hey, I got, and I, I'm a publisher too. I got, I got, you know, it's like getting that book out there was just you know, I, it's like, it's like, I, yeah, it's, it's amazing, you know, so congrats on you as well. You know, it's, it's just amazing to be an author and that that's success to me, um, whether it sells or not, but it's just, it really depends on how you define success, but it's also about acknowledging all those small wins, Yeah, you know, it's like, you know, Celebrating writing it like every, way. every ch every chapter of the way, you know, it's yes. a win, you know, and yes. then, and then finally getting it out there. It's another win. If you get reviews again, wins, if you get, you know, and, and getting these rejections, I mean, seriously, you, you, you know, you're taking the action to actually apply. You're taking, like, if you apply for a job, same thing, you have to get a series of no's. Nobody gets only yeses. Yes. It's impossible. Right. You have to go through a series of no's before you get a yes. I think Absolutely. it's important for people to remember who's out there, whatever it is that you're doing in your life, the more no's you get, the closer you are to a yes, period. So stay more motivated right staying gratitude yeah, yeah. sounds like a true salesperson right there yeah. I love that. Uh, so uh rachel um, i'm in my blood you're, you're fantastic and you're in a beautiful part of portugal right there as well yes um how, how can people reach you outside and of follow uh, you uh, outside and of watch. getting on a ship and come seeing you there <laughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, it's really easy. If you can spell my name, Rachel Smets, S-M-E-T-S. Um, and then you can find me on YouTube, you know, where I have weekly videos with inspiration, motivation. All my links are below every of my videos. Um, so again, type in Rachel Smets. It's my website is rachelsmets.com. Facebook, all social media. It's always Rachel Smets. So yeah, that's easy. And I'm yeah happy to hear from you. Same here. Wonderful. Same here. Well, Thank you so much. Yes, you are wonderful. And you're giving, I want to hear your so TED much. Talks. Can I ask you real quick before we go? What yeah. TED Talks, what topics did you discuss? The first one I did was um, take action, you know, your next step in life. So it's all about, you know, taking action and not living a life with regrets, but really taking the steps and taking so responsibility good. of your life. And the other one was stop comparing yourself to others and be your own self. I love it. Thank Excellent. you so much, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, good guys. News it's horizon. lovely to meet you guys. Same yes, here. very nice to meet you. Enjoy and Portugal. Yes, Enjoy we that. have our news segment coming up. There's a lot of news oh, happening in the world. crazy news. <laughs> Whatever y'all want to talk about go ahead and put it in the comments we'll yeah. be sure to bring it up and we'll be right back